There are few feelings more powerful than being able to park a full-size SUV into a compact car spot. But I've just recently felt the same way on guitar, actually. I was doing this show the other night, and there was kind of like a hang sesh beforehand, and we were just jamming around. I had the acoustic guitar. People were coming up and asking if I knew songs, right? And uh, my basically entire performing career has been taking requests. So I feel like my one elite guitar skill is being able to learn songs super quickly just by hearing them, all right? And uh, these people were very impressed that I was able to do this. It doesn't seem that impressive to me, but this is something that I feel like I can actually help you do. It's like, just learn any song. There's a few tricks that I've developed over the years that I would like to share here. And uh, the reason that I think it's easier to do by ear than looking it up is because like you'll find yourself like, let's say you have cell service, <laughs> first of all. So like, all right, let me let me see how this sounds, and I'm going to bring Spotify up, and I'm going to listen to it, and then I'm going to bring a chord chart up, and it just, I don't know. Ultimate Guitar is the worst website ever because it's always going to want you to download the app, so the chord thing is, like, ridiculous. A lot of it's wrong anyway. But being mm. able to, like, learn a few shapes and then use your ear is the most important way to learning any song and doing it pretty quickly, all right? So the first thing that I want to talk about is... <laughs> You know, you can apply this yourself. I would say maybe watch part of this video and then just bring a song up and try to try to do this along with it. But the first thing is just tracking a root note and finding the parent key of what a song is in, okay? So what I mean by that is just taking either the E or the A string, listening to your guitar along with the song, and then just auditioning whatever key it's in, okay? So this is something that I always do. And it's kind of funny how actually my hands will generally go to the right note without even me auditioning it anymore. And that's just kind of like a product of just doing it forever. And then actually, you know, being able to hear and translate that to your hands. But once you start kind of moving around and hunting pecking, then it's like, all right, like let's say I find the A, okay? Now, an A in the key of A, this will sound right over even the chords when they're changing, okay? There's a power that the parent key, the parent note has over a chord progression. Just like that power of me getting that compact car. Because let's be like real, like compact car spots look about the same width as regular car spots. It just says compact car. That's a whole different story, but whatever. So even if like, like let's say the, the chords in this key end up being like a D major to an E major, that A is still gonna kind of have a, a resolution, even if you're not ending it, over that entire key, right? So once you start by finding, like, all right, what is this gonna sound like? Whether it's a major key or a minor key, which we'll talk more about in a second. Finding the note that sounds the best is where you start, okay? And again, your ear doesn't even have to be great. You don't have to practice ear training. You're gonna feel that one of the notes is right, okay? And it's like, all right, once you do that, then maybe you can turn it into a power chord just by adding your ring finger, a string down. You can turn it into a, a major or a minor chord, right? That'll give you a, a clearer sense of the vibe of it's in the, a major key or a minor key. Now, again, sometimes that can take some, some crazy bar chord work to do. So I would suggest if you're doing that, maybe use easier shapes like this. For the major chord, use the E major shape, even if it's a different note. Like if it's A, put that major shape under it. All right, there's E major, A major, A sharp major, B major, C major. Move that around. Audition that over the chord progression. Be like, does this sound right? Or does this sound right? Where it's, again, here's A minor. Again, not an easy A minor, but just seven, seven, five, seven, 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 six, major, seven, seven, five, minor. Okay? So. That might not even be the first thing you do. Sometimes just really practice that, audition that chord. We're gonna diagnose we're in A something. Maybe it's A major, maybe it's A minor. We don't know yet, okay? The next step is to find out where it goes next. Now, there are some shortcuts that are gonna work all the time. Usually, it's gonna go either to the four chord or the five chord next, whether it's major or minor, okay? What I mean by that is, if you watch my Patreon or whatever, or a bunch of my videos, you'll know that you can take a, a key with the major scale and number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, and all of them become chords, right? So one, four, five is like a shape coming from that scale, right? So here's the one chord. If you go down a string, fifth fret on the A string, there's your four chord. 
go two frets higher, there's your five chord, two frets higher, there's your six chord. So being able to number chord progressions is super, super helpful in this. That's why everybody should learn that. But beyond that, the focus of this lesson is just kind of like moving around and trying to find these patterns, okay? These spaces, these intervals between chords that are really gonna help you out. And it's the most important thing for just being able to like do stuff on the fly. Now, sometimes I think even going down strings, going, going this way on a guitar can kind of eat up time. I almost think that going just left to right is a great way to kind of do stuff. So like a one, four, five is just the fifth fret. 10th fret, 12th fret in this key, okay? Now again, the frets are important here, but what's more important is, here's my first chord, five to 10, that's five frets. Moving this shape five frets away, that's gonna be more important because this is the spacing, like from five to 10. And knowing that from five to 10 on the E string is the same thing from five to five on the A string. So when you're playing along, Try that, try going to that four chord. If that works, great, that's your next chord. If that doesn't work, maybe try the five chord. Now, again, in my experience, the most requested songs usually actually start off either one four, or it's that one progression that everyone knows. You've probably seen like an internet video on this, like play any song with this one chord progression. That's a one, five, six, four, okay? A million songs are just a one, five, six, four, where like if we're an A, we've got the fifth fret on the E string, 7th fret on the A string, ninth fret on the A string, 5th fret, right? And then some combination of those four notes is going to give you the song, all right? The beautiful thing about modern songs, maybe the not beautiful thing if you're a bit of a purist, is it's usually the same chord progression looped over and over again. It's much more likely to be one chord progression. Like every Billie Eilish song pretty much is just one chord progression loops over and over again. And they're great songs. I'm not complaining about it. It just makes this a lot easier, right? So once you be like, all right, I've diagnosed this as like my parent root note, I can just get five frets higher and that's a place to investigate. Okay, now right now I want to change keys well, because I don't want to make this a, an A major or A minor lesson. Let's go to uh, B, right? So now like, all right, I've unpacked your on, finally like there's, there's that seventh fret on the E string. All right, where do I want to go next? I do that same thing, I could try it. It's like, all right, what's well, five frets, what's seven, that's 12. You know, all right, no, that's not, that's not quite it. Maybe I want to go lower. All right, well that's interesting. Maybe that's it. That's a good, right here, three frets behind. That's a very important interval. Right here, that three fret, three frets known as a minor third, if we're talking about this way. Maybe that's what I want, because that's from uh, the one chord to the six chord going backwards. I think that the thing about numbers when you first learn them, because when you first learn just numbers, you learn how to count them in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. right? Now on guitar, it's like, there's still a hesitation to be like, all right, I want to keep going forward when I think going backwards <laughs> is something that's actually a little more common musically. I think that we have, our ears are better than we think they are in the way that we can pick up descending or ascending chord progressions, right? It's a lot easier to diagnose to be like, all right, this is a, a B to hear the fourth fret to the second fret to open E. And that would be a one, six, five, four, okay? But now all of these are just spaces that you'll start to recognize with your ears and then your hands are gonna be able to take those and put those spaces into practice, okay? And that all starts from hunting and pecking, right? Nothing wrong with that. Might take you a while, may you might not do it on your first try, your second try. You should do it in your first 12 tries. If you don't get it in 12 tries, you're wrong. Because <laughs> one, of, one of those 12 was the right note. Now you also might be like, well, try doing this with a Steely Dan song. If you're gonna be the guy that's like, this method doesn't work with Steely Dan songs, you're no fun to have at the party anyways, and just recuse yourself from the premises because nobody wants to talk to you anyway, right? But what's actually gonna be a lot of fun is if you put Elixir Strings on your guitar. This video is sponsored by Elixir Strings, my all-time favorite strings. I got them on this Yamaha right here. Uh, they're the best, they're the best. Also, because if you're hunting and pecking, you don't have an annoying squeaking sound because they're coded strings. So it's not gonna grate people's ears while you're hunting and pecking. If you don't have coded strings, you'll hear that really like 
that harsh sound of your hand sliding around the strings, and it hurts your fingers actually. If you've never tried Elixir Strings, there's an affiliate link in the title of this, in the description of this video, because these are so much easier on your fingers. They last way longer. I personally think they sound better. Sound is definitely a matter of taste. I just love Elixir Strings so much. I've used them forever that like they are the sound of acoustic guitar to me. So thank you to Elixir Strings for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to some more tips and tricks, right? So let's say we're in B. It's like, all right, I can go down strings and hunt around. But basically, all the chords there are going to be somewhere around here. And there's different devices that will just help you get there, like going back three frets. Try that out. If it's this to this, great. Maybe you can kind of continue on from there and be like, all right, well, I also know that B major is the seventh fret on the E string or the second fret on the A string. So if you know stuff like that, like, all right, whatever note this is on the E string, if I go back five notes and down a string, that's gonna give me the same note and I can put a chord there. That's something that's really helpful because being able to go backward as well as forward is something that will really, I, I, I think it's super important in being able to learn songs quickly, especially piano songs that you're transposing to guitar. Because as guitar is more of a, an instrument of movable shapes, piano songs is more of an instrument of inversions. So you'll stay in the same area. Like let's say we just have these three frets. You can play a whole song just doing different chord voicings from this position. And that's actually how piano players move a lot. Whereas guitar players, you kind of have a little bit more horizontal movement going on through the fretboard. So that's why it's really important to be able to backtrack and then get the other chords, just learning roots, uh, chords that are rooted on the E string and the A string, okay? So real quick, let's just go through some, some cheater methods on how to find chords that will fit to audition to diagnose if they're the right chords or the wrong chords, okay? We'll say in B, same string, back three frets, is a great indicator of if it's going to a minor key next, right? This is the root note, the chord, the one chord, into its relative minor, the six chord, okay? Now, again, so this would be like a G sharp minor chord. But again, don't think of the name of the chord so much as like the sound of the chord. Is that right? Is that not right? If it's not right, that's fine. We're at least in position to get back into maybe the five chord and the four chord in this key, right? Because once you get to the minor, you can just go two frets back, and there's the five chord, which is a major in pretty much every song. And then two frets back from there, there's another major chord. So just as in the key of A, we were able to go one, four, five, or one, four, five, using different chord voicings across one string or down a couple strings. It's just as important and often overlooked to be able to go one, four, five, or one, five, four. But knowing, just like knowing that going five frets higher, seven plus five is 12, that's gonna get you to the four chord. Going seven frets back, also gonna get you from the one chord to the four chord or another chord that interval that distance away so when you're trying stuff out be like all right i know that this is right and sometimes until your ear is really good you might go to a four chord higher and that doesn't sound right even if it's the right chord okay and that can be a confusing part and that's something that takes a little bit of ear training to like really reconcile but that's why it's important to know that five frets higher is the same as seven frets back Okay, what's five plus seven? 12, there's 12 notes in music. So that's how that works, right? As long as you have those intervals, five, five, five frets higher is seven frets back. Just like four frets higher is eight frets back. As long as those equal 12, because there's only 12 notes, you're gonna end up getting that same chord either going higher or going lower. Hope that makes sense, all right? So just like that, that doesn't sound right, but like it kind of sounds right. What that might mean is it actually goes, lower because the root note, the bass note, has so much importance on how we perceive a chord progression moving. And especially when you're trying to learn like an acoustic version of a song quickly, and you just have like, it could just be a drum track and a bass guitar. If you just have like a bass guitar, just kind of like, 
Maybe it's like some kind of riff like that. It's like, all right, well, if the bass guitar is going lower, going higher on an acoustic guitar might not sound right, even though it is right, okay? Again, for all intensive purposes, going from a B major to an E major, however you do it, there's a million different ways to do it. But only one of them might sound just like the song. But the more you do this, the more you experiment with it, the more it's gonna sound correct to you, or more it sound like a version of the song. Because, you know, let's face it, even though acoustic guitar is the best instrument of all time, and especially for a singer-songwriter, and especially if you're kind of just doing a representation of a song, it might not sound exactly like what you're doing, or exactly like what the what the original song sounds like, but it's gonna sound like you're playing the song. And especially if your goal is just to be able to to play songs and maybe sing yourself or have other people sing, which is like such a fun time to do. It's a great community as aspect of everything. It's something that you wanna learn. Even just with stuff that's like total like riffs, right? Uh, like let's say somebody wanted to learn like, oh, let's do like a, an acoustic version of like some tool, right? <laughs> like, okay, well, I know that there's a riff there. And I forget, I think it's actually in D, but this is just standard tune. You can be like, just because I know that they're doing these hammer-ons, maybe I just like pun around, I find it, okay, I, I can find that E, I don't know the. I know there's two riffs there, that first one I hunted around, I found that it was an E. Guess what, I just go from one to a four, right? Mm -hmm. Which is gonna bring us to the minor version of all this, all right? Last thing I wanna talk about, just kinda of like using this method, is starting with the minor chord, which the best songs always do, right? So let's take uh, something, to, let's go G minor, right? Let's say you're hunting around, and you find it's like, all right, oh, it's a G, oh, I'm in luck, it's in G, and then you put a G major chord on it, and it's like, oh, that's not it at all, it's G minor, right? It's like, okay, usually, almost always, this is gonna be, the, I still think of this as the sixth chord in a major key. Because once you start thinking of different numbers where it's like, all right, so maybe my one chord is my minor chord, and now my three chord is my major, and four and five, once you start having different numbers for both major and minor, I think it gets a little more confusing. Whereas even if it's in a minor key, I'll still use the major numbers. What I mean by that is like, if it's in G minor, I'm still thinking it's in B flat major. And like, let's say it's just like G minor to like C minor back to G. I'm still thinking of that as a six chord because again, you know, that's in the in the in B flat. G is the six note. It's like, all right, that's just like a six to, to two in B flat. Even if it doesn't resolve on the one chord like that. So hopefully make that makes sense, but the intervals still match up. You don't have different intervals just because it's a minor key. Remember, this is still three frets away from the major chord, which there we've got the, the four and the five from that B flat. Maybe that tracks. If not, I could be like, all right, well, there's my two chord and my three chord. But again, all these intervals end up lining up. Even if it's a minor key, Right? We just go down a string and two frets higher. That gives us the six chord, the two chord, and the three chord in the key of B flat. Just like being in B flat, we have the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. So by learning this little kind of method, this device, we actually learn the six main chords of this key, right? Minor, 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 major, major, major. And then we turn that into a chord scale. And that's when it all comes together, just like that. Because you just did a hunt and peck, one, four, five, minor. And again, in this key would be the six chord, the two chord, and the three chord. And then one, four, five major, one, four, five. And then we eventually get one, two, three, four, five, six, one, okay? So all of that just comes from just hunting and pecking, going horizontally, using your ears, trying to figure out songs, and then 
what you'll find out happening is even the weird ones that have some interesting stuff happen, right? Like, let's just use a super popular basic example, Radiohead Creep, right? You're looking around, you find it's like, oh, I know this isn't a G, that's major. And then it's like, all right, then I think it goes to here. Right, bum, 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 bum. Well, that's okay, that's a three chord, that should be minor. It's like, oh, that's not right. It's just, okay, oh, it's major. So that's a major three chord, that's something special. And because you've arrived at being like, all right, so this chord goes from a one to a three, but it's not mine, it's a major three. Then it becomes something special that you remember, all right? And it's like, okay, well, Creep has a major three chord, and that was interesting to me. And then it goes to the four chord. And then that four chord just kind of stays there, but something changes, what happens? So it goes minor, and then it's like, now you're really learning music because even the weird chord progressions have special things about them that now you can diagnose because you already understood how to just get around and find the regular diatonic staying inside the key ways of doing it. So when you do come across something that has like a minor four chord or a major three chord, that becomes important and that becomes different and then you'll make a mental note of that, and it'll be easier to remember later. So hopefully this was helpful, because these are just some things that took me forever to kind of learn, and I wish I would have started using my ear more instead of looking at a chord chart. It's the same as like kind of like getting around a new town. If you're just glued to your GPS, like a chord chart, the entire time, you'll never actually learn how the town is laid out. You kind of have to just feel it out sometimes, and hopefully you don't end up in a super sketchy neighborhood. But luckily the stakes are low, and you've got Elixir Strings on your guitar. So if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, or the website. Thank you again to Elixir Strings. Get yourself some, it really helps the channel out if you use my affiliate link. And uh, if you have any questions, talk to me. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video.